Welcome to the fifth PD lessons of system of Dini equation under PMET 11522 matrix algebra. So in this lessons, we will discuss about row general form of a matrix. So a matrix in uh, row echelon form has uh, several properties. So we will discuss what are these properties. The first one is all rows consisting entirely of zeros occur at the bottom of the matrix. So if you have a zero row in a matrix, so in that case, they should appear only at the bit bottom of the matrix. For example, look at this example, look at this matrix. So if there is a zero row, so it zero row appear at the bottom of the matrix. So if there exists a zero row, it should be appear only at the bottom of the matrix. So that's the first condition for the row HRN form. Okay. Now for the one more example. Here also we have a zero row. So it a zero row appear at only at the bottom of the matrix. So that's the first condition for the uh, row HRN four. So one more example. One more example. Uh, now you may think that uh, if it is in row HRN four, if a given matrix is in row HRN four, it is necessary to have a zero row. No, it is not something like that. So if there exists a row, uh, zero row, it should be appear only at the bottom of the matrix. For example, in the last matrix here, the last one is not uh, in the bottom. The last row is, I mean, the fourth row is not a zero row. But since it, this matrix does not contain any, uh, any zero row, it doesn't matter. If there is still this matrix is in row echelon form, row echelon form, if there exists a zero row, it should be appear only at, at the bottom of the matrix. Now, the second condition for each row that does not consist entirely of zeros, the first non-zero entry is one. So we call this is a leading one. So we will understand this look by looking at one example. Here you can see now this is the uh, this is this row is non-zero row. So the first lead, first coefficient should be always one. So if there exists a row which is not entirely zero, so the first coefficient should be always one. For example, if you consider the third row, third row is not in, uh, entirely zero, but first non-zero entry is 1. So likewise, if you consider any um, non-zero row, so the always, the first row is always, um, first entry is always 1. So that's a one, uh, the second condition, a matrix to be a, uh, in row HLN 4. And the third condition, if you consider two successive rows, the leading one in the higher row is farther to the left than the leading one in the lower row. So we will see one example. Now you can see there are non-zero rows and zero rows. If you consider the zero row, we know that leading one should be always one here and here. If you consider two consecutive rows, Consider, for example, the first row and the second row. So the leading one of the above row should be uh, uh, farther to the left hand side. So farther to the left hand side when you compare to the leading one in the second row. So this condition is always true for any two consecutive rows. For example, just consider the third and uh, second and third. So the leading one of the second row should be to the left hand side to the when you compare to the leading one of the um, third row so it should be always it's like it should be always like one here the leading one the other should be here 
So therefore, the below this one, it should be always zero, like three, one, five. If the exit leading one is here, it should appear here, not here or here. So always it should be have this four. In some cases, there might be no uh, zero row, uh, non-zero row leading one. So it doesn't matter. So always this leading one should have this format. So this is the third property of the uh, non-zero uh, row uh, echelon form. A matrix in row echelon form is in reduced row echelon form if every uh, column that has lead in one has zero every position in the uh, uh, position below its lead in one. If it is, for example, in this case, you can see one here, all the entries below one are zero. So if it is in reduced row echelon form. So if you can take this one, all the entries below this lead in one, they are zero. They are zero. So here also. If the X is leading one, it is zero. So it doesn't matter about, we do not mind about this uh, entries above the leading one. They might be posit um, positive, negative or zero. But all we have to consider is if they always below leading one, all the coefficients should be, uh, all the entries should be zero. That's what um, Reduce row echelon form. So there are important things, three important things in the re uh, reduce row echelon form. Uh, first one, uh, if there exists zero row, should be appear only at the bottom of the matrix. And uh, always the first non-zero entry of the of a row should be one. We call it leading one. All the entries below leading one should be uh, zero. Now. We can see some example, which is not in row, uh, not in row echelon form. This one, because uh, if you consider the second row, so the leading one is two, it is not one. So therefore it is not in row echelon form. So the leading coefficient is not one in the second row. One example, one more. And here, so, now you can see in the second row, there is a zero row, but it does not appear at the bottom. So it is in the third row. After that, we have a non-zero uh, row. So it is not possible in row reduced uh, row echelon four. And third example here, in both case, it does not contain any zero row. Uh, leading coefficients are one. But if you compare the second one and third one, so second one and third one, leading one in the third row, it just below the leading one of the second row. It is not possible. Always, if we take two consecutive rows, uh, if the X leading one, uh, all the entries below this leading one should be zero. Since this is not equal to zero, we cannot claim that this is in reduced row echelon 4. So when you are look at the given matrix, you should be able to identify whether a given matrix is in row echelon form or not. So usually what we are doing uh, when we are solving this linear system, we convert given augmented matrix into uh, row its row echelon form by using elementary row operation. Then by considering the equivalent system, you can easily solve the linear system. So we will do, uh, we will discuss these things, how to do that in the next few video lessons. Thank you so much for joining with us.